Good morning everyone. Today we'll be looking in how to trigger a lambda function when an AWS event is triggered using CloudWatch events or currently now known as AWS Event Bridge. Uh, so today what we'll be using, we'll be using AWS EC2 as an example, uh, turning on and off the machine uh, using AWS Event Bridge as a media to receive that event because AWS actually, AWS actually do lock all your uh, management uh, API calls, then it will trigger an AWS Lambda function. So what is an AWS uh, CloudWatch events? So in our previous video, we mentioned that we are using uh, CloudWatch to trigger a Lambda function. But the way that how we did it was through a cron job method you schedule a particular time, then every time when it reaches that particular period, then it will trigger. However, there is another way of doing things, which is the uh, event-driven uh, rule. So what is the difference is uh, now, let's say during the event where your EC2 instance has turned on and it has reached a particular state of the instance, it will send you a uh, uh, it will trigger a lambda function and possibly you can write it in a way to send you a notification if you will wish uh, if you wish to do that so definitely it's not just limited to ec2 it's also able to use for various services so what is aws event bridge aws event bridge it's actually at, uh it's being renamed from the previously known uh cloudwatch events however they have uh they have further built on this feature to extend to partner companies where uh, if you were to connect to some third party uh, applications, uh, APIs, they are able to trigger and send them an uh, so-called JSON style information to trigger their function. Okay, so let's move into the example. Uh, as usual, we go into our AWS account, make sure you logged in. If not, you won't be able to access the services. Uh, going into CloudWatch, uh, so this is uh, what you'll be seeing. Uh, so remember just now we were saying that uh, uh, let's look into CloudWatch events rules. Uh, but because uh, they have migrated the new service, so now it's being called as an event bridge. It's an enhanced version of the CloudWatch events. It is fully backwards compatible with CloudWatch events. So if I were to press onto this, go to Amazon CloudWatch, you'll notice that I have uh, a few examples here. Uh, I have done up some of my own uh, CloudWatch event rule uh, triggers. So today what we'll be looking into uh, this example. So let me just uh, create a new rule to show for today's example. So tech. So I'll just call it uh, EC2 stage change demo. Okay. So what we have mentioned previously, like the last, uh, in my last video, we have done an example for scheduling. Today, we'll be looking into the event pattern. So uh, in this case, if your event pattern is based on a particular AWS service, so for today's, simpli uh, today's example and simplicity state, state, we'll be using an EC2 turning on and off state change notification. So what we are doing now is we'll select a predefined pattern by service. So what you can, you notice that now uh, in the previous version, they don't have this kind of different versions and they only support AWS services. You will notice that now there are a, a multitudes of different services that you can connect to as shown on the screen here. Uh, I believe they will add in a bit more in the future. So let me zoom in a bit more. Okay, so today for our case, since we are using AWS as an example, let's click on uh, AWS as a service provider select the service name that we want. So you notice that majority of the services is all connected to CloudWatch. There's code build, code commit, EC2, DynamoDB. So depending on the scenario of what you want, uh, you can select the right service to trigger a function. So in this case today, we'll be selecting EC2. Okay, so in uh, for our example today, you notice there's a variety of different uh, services and events that will be triggered when something has made a change. So in this case, what today we'll be doing is a state change notification. So this state change, right, is like when you turn on an EC2 instance, you will notice that you can select, uh, you can actually trigger the Lambda function. You can either choose to have any particular state or let's see what other examples do we have. 
there's the pending state, running state, shutting down, terminated, stop, uh, stopping and stopped. This is the full life cycle of how an EC2 instance is working. So you can even configure each CloudWatch rules to run a different type of uh, Lambda function. So for today's case, we will run a running state. Or even uh, the best is we can even add in another one called pending. So you'll notice that on the right hand side, this is how the event pattern will look like. Uh, we are saying that if let's say there's an event pattern with a state that is running or pending, then it will trigger the Lambda function in this case. So uh, the thing about today's example is that actually you can even choose not just to trigger a Lambda function, you can even use it to send an email through SNS or any other fee, any other services that is currently available inside the event bridge uh, trigger uh, target, uh, target output. So some people might prefer to have an SNS topic to send yourself an email if anything has gone wrong. So to test whether our event pattern works, you can actually just use a sample event provided by AWS. This gives you an indication on how does the event looks like when, it was, when this uh, has been triggered. So you can press the test event pattern and it will tell you that the sample event match uh, the event pattern. So if let's say I change this to la la land, uh, sorry, I think I can't change that. Oh yeah, because I'm using a sample event. So maybe I can even do a copy paste. Let me see whether does this work. Change this to two. So you notice that it doesn't match the event pattern because the detail is different. I think even if we choose stopped it will not work so what we should be doing is changing this back to pending and try it out oh, sorry i think i might have done something wrong there let me change this to pending test so you notice that once you uh once it matches the event then it will run okay so for today's example since we mentioned that we'll be using a lambda function uh we will Prior to creating this event bridge, right, what we should be doing is actually to create a new function. Uh, although uh, in this case, I have already created one, uh, but maybe it's better to show you again. So let's create a new one. State change demo two. Okay, so remember this name, I put a demo two in front. You can choose the different kinds of uh, languages that uh, you are more familiar with. So today's example will be using Python 3.9. Okay, uh, in recent updates, uh, now Lambda functions do support both x86 architecture and ARM64. So if you were to really save on money, actually selecting the ARM64 architecture would definitely have uh, better savings in terms of execution time and uh, processing time. So uh, in this case, always remember that you need to create an execution role. So uh, in this example, because we're just showing the main functionality that is able to trigger the Lambda function, I'll just create the most de uh, default one. Uh, the default permissions will provide you a CloudWatch uh, permissions to lock all your, all your Lambda functions output inside the CloudWatch logs. So later I'll show you what does this mean. So let's just create a function. So once you see this, you'll notice that there is an event button here, uh, event uh, JSON object here. So what you can do is you can, uh, when, when you trigger the function, it will send the event through here. So what you can do, you, you can actually just say print event. Then this print event, right, it will appear in the CloudWatch log. Okay, so let's deploy this function. Uh, we wanted to test it out and see whether this works or not. We press uh, create a testing event. We just press test. So now uh, you notice that this function logs right will be stored inside the CloudWatch log. So all this start and report will be inside the CloudWatch log. Let's move into the monitoring session and see how does the log look like. Okay, I think you need some. Uh, you need to wait a while. Let me check what permissions do we have just to make sure that we have the right permission. We, are, we have the Amazon CloudWatch logs. So once you add this permission uh, into your IAM role, you will, you will have, uh, you are able to lock all the, uh, all the functions that you have written up to now. So let's go back to monitoring. Might take some time to create the function. Okay, let's just view the logs inside the CloudWatch. 
So although it wasn't shown inside the Lambda function, you'll notice that it has already appeared inside the CloudWatch log. So like what we have just done is we have just output, uh, we just press test. So all these logs are currently being stored here already. Okay, let's go back to the event bridge. Okay, you notice that because I've just created it, it won't be displayed here. What I have to do is I have to refresh my uh, creating of the rule. So I have to rekey in everything uh, again. But let's just make this quick. Demo tool will be the example. Pattern service, AWS. Uh, we have used, we have selected EC2 as an example. Uh, we are going to do a state change notification. We specify both pending and running. You can even select for a particular specific uh, instance ID if you wanted to, so that you can monitor just as ID instead of having all the other IDs together. So you can notice that you can even just select, uh, like in this case, actually we do have a few, but I'm not going to go through this today. So let's go back to any instance. Uh, AWS default event bus because we are using the, the service from AWS. So a trigger is a Lambda function as an output. Uh, to the service that we wanted to connect to. So in this case, we should have the state change demo tool example. Uh, so there are different versioning. You can even select what kind of functions and versions that you want. And you can even select uh, whether do you match the full event or partial matched event. Then uh, there are other additional features that you can do if let's say the, the, the Lambda didn't trigger properly. And with that, we can just need to press create. Okay. So now you notice that the demo tool is being activated. Let's go back to our EC2 instance. So uh, prior to this video, I've already created multiple instances. If you already have one, you don't need to create one more. You can even test it out on your own uh, instance that is currently in the stop state. So just now what we were saying about stop is uh, uh, this state will change. So let's say right now I'm going to turn on my instance. Okay, so uh, while we are waiting for the instance, I'll just pause this video so that we can continue once the state is turned into running. So let's refresh the page. Currently, you see that it's already in the pending state. Okay, uh, remember just now we have selected a pending state as an example. So now if we were to go back to the, uh, okay, sorry, this is not the right one. Okay, so just now we were in the state change to demo. So this was the previous log. It might or might not be stored here. Let's check. Okay, so uh, just now when we have uh, turned from stop to pending, you will notice that now it has been recorded. Just go back here and check your state change demo. Uh, the Lambda function will be active for a while. So uh, you don't need to so-called reboot your uh, Lambda function every single time. If it's less than a particular period, it will be uh, still considered as a running function. So ah, so you notice that you see now there's the new there's the new uh, log that has been stored inside the system. So uh, what we are seeing here, like just now what we mentioned, you notice that at 10.27, the timing was saying that yes, I changed from stop to pending. So it has recorded the event here. Then once the system has been booted up, okay, now it's saying that the stop state is running. So that's how you would trigger a uh, uh, event-driven uh, Lambda function. So sometimes this is good, like let's say if you have some other services inside your EC2 instance or some other Lambda function that you have triggered and you wanted to run another new trigger. So all these are like an event-based uh, triggering. So this would definitely help. Uh, so that's all for today. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you do like this video, do like and subscribe. Uh, it will also help a lot if you are able to share my video out for uh, people who are willing to, uh, who wanted to learn more about AWS and uh, maybe Python in this case. Thank you.